In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a terminal. Well, what do I mean by that, really? If you don't know what a terminal is, it's basically just another way of using the computer. Really, back in the old days when uh, computers were super slow, they didn't really have enough memory and processing power to actually print out buttons and graphics like they do right now. So they didn't have any buttons or menu bars or anything like that to use a computer. All they had was just text and the shell or the terminal and they would do literally everything from the terminal, okay? And today I'm going to show you how to use the computer using the terminal. And why would you want to learn that nowadays, even though the computers are super fast and they're now capable of just drawing out all the fancy graphics. So what's the point of using the terminal? Well, a terminal uh, allows you to do some things super quickly. Like for example, let's say you had to copy about a thousand files, okay? a thousand HTML files or something, okay? Um, and your folder has some HTML files, maybe it has some images, or maybe it even has some documents or whatever, okay? Uh, using the finder, this would be just horrible. You would have to click and drag a bunch of files. It would just, it would just suck. Sometimes you would even like, imagine that, like actually copying and pasting thousand files by hand. On the terminal, it's just one single command. It's pretty sweet and simple. So today, I'm going to show you the very basics of the terminal, really, just how to use the computer using terminal, like move around the file structure, like go to a different folder and things like that. So super simple, super basic stuff. All right, so open up terminal. Also, one more thing before I start, really, uh, this video works for Mac OS X and it works for Linux. If you're on Windows, you should either move to a Mac or a Linux computer and then follow along with the videos, I guess. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you see when you open up the terminal is Earth. Well, Earth is the name of my computer. And you're not going to see Earth. You're going to see the name of your computer over there. And this other thing, FZ, is the username that I'm logged into right now. That's the username or the account name, whatever, on this computer, OK? So this is going to be your username. And this squiggly line is called a tilde. And this tilde represents the home folder. And that's th basically stuff over here represents the folder you're currently in, OK? The information might be like slightly different, formatted slightly different on your terminal if you're using Linux. Uh, but it's still the same stuff. Also, the dollar sign means it's a prompt. Um, Basically, it means that the terminal is ready and it's waiting for you to type in stuff. Okay. All right. So I said we are currently inside of the home folder. The first thing we should do or learn how to do is go to a different folder. Okay. If you don't know what's inside of a home folder or if you've never been to the home folder before, uh, let's actually go there right now. Let's show you what it is. So Finder, click on Go and then Home. It'll be slightly different in Linux. I'm sure you know how to find it. Like. Go find the home folder. Well, the home folder stores all your applications and your documents and your movies, if you use this folder, I guess, and your downloads and stuff like that. Let's go back. Let's say right now that you want to go to the documents folder, OK? Inside of the finder, it's pretty simple. You just double click on the documents folder, and you're in documents folder. Ta-da, pretty simple. Inside of the terminal, use this command called cd stands for change directory. Directory basically means folder. So change folder, OK? Change directory to documents. So type in documents, and then press Enter. And now you're inside of documents. How do I know? Look at this. Change from tilde, which stands for home, to documents. That's nice. Now what? Let's look inside of documents. One thing that you might notice right now, what's the difference that you see inside of the terminal and the finder. Well, the biggest one that I see is the fact that documents lists out all the folders and basically a whole bunch of information right for you inside of the window. The terminal does nothing of that sort, OK? There's nothing inside of the terminal. Unless you actually ask for it, the terminal would not give you anything. So what if I don't know what's inside of the documents folder? I want to access some file, but I don't really know where it is. All right. We use this command called ls list. And that gives you the folders that are folders and files that are inside of documents. So as you can see, it is Batcave, League of Legends, random, 
digital edition, uh, editions and chores. Uh, these are all the folders inside of my documents. Okay, and how do I know these are folders? It's because they're colored blue. And your terminal might not be colored blue because I changed the settings for my terminal. That's why it's blue right now. Uh, and the way you would know if it's a folder without changing your settings is to do ls and then press space and then minus l. That's and then press enter. Uh, this minus l is basically a parameter that you give to the command. Okay, it's kind of like an argument that give it gives to the command, and it, it stands for long. So list long, and it gives you a bunch of details about the folders and informations and stuff like that. And the reason why I know Batcave is a folder, aside from the fact that it's blue in my terminal, is the very first character, if you notice, is D, which stands for directory, okay? It might not be obvious here because every single thing inside of my folder is a directory. Inside of documents, I have only directories because, look, all of them are Ds. So if I go into uh, Batcave and then ls again, well, ls-l to get more information, list long, you could see that books, uh, books is a directory because it has the dash D, not the dash D, it's just D in, as the first character. I know that testing in python.pdf is a PDF because it ends at PDF and it's not definitely not a directory because it doesn't have the dash, or I mean, it doesn't have the D at the start, it has a dash. A dash means it's a file. What about all of this stuff afterwards? Uh, those are called permissions, and those are the permissions that users and uh, other people on the system have to the files. We'll talk about that later. Um, for all you really need to know right now is that this D means it's a directory, dash means it's not a directory, it's a file or it's something else, okay? It's not a directory. A CD command doesn't work on files, obviously. You can't change directory to a file, so let's try that. Let me go to model.uxf, that's easier to type. And then it says model.uxf is not a directory, okay? So let's go into books or something. Actually, let's go to practice, okay? If you notice there, I didn't actually type out practice. I typed out PRA and then I pressed tab and it auto-completed for me. So it's ls and as you can see, these are the files and folders inside of my computer, uh, inside of my practice folder. If I do ls-l, it'll actually show me all the information. All right, that's nice and simple. What if I want to go back? I didn't. I don't think I showed you that yet. No, I've not. What if I want to go back? Let's say I want to go back to um, Batcave. Well, we are currently in practice. Let's. Let's go to practices out of Finder. Say I want to go back. Well, in, inside of Finder, I just press the back button. And now I'm inside of Batcave again. Well, here you just type in cd dot dot. And the dot dot stands for the parent directory. Press enter. And cd dot dot will take you to the parent directory of practice. The parent directory or the parent folder of practice is Batcave. Now you're in Batcave. That's pretty nice. All right, how about some more interesting stuff? Let's say I wanna move some stuff, okay? I don't want my testing in Python file, or let's let's choose something simpler to type right now. I don't wanna type the entire thing, testing in Python. Let's say I wanna move my model.uxf file to my uh, practice folder or something, okay? I don't want it inside of Batcave, I want it inside of practice. And the way to do that is just type in MV MV stands for move, by the way. And then you type in model.uxf. And this is the file that you want to move. And then press space, and then type in the folder you want to move it to. Simple enough. Press enter. And it doesn't say anything, because remember, terminal only says anything if something's wrong, or if you explicitly ask for information. You didn't ask for anything, nothing went wrong, so terminal's not saying anything. And this dollar sign is over here, so it means that it's waiting for you to type stuff. All right, so I'm gonna type in ls. And as you can see, the uxf file is gone, okay? Let's go to practice. Or instead, actually, better yet, let's go ls, practice. 
Notice what I just did there. I didn't type ls. Uh, just ls and press enter. Okay. Let me just press enter here. ls practice basically says list all the things inside of practice. Okay. And this is kind of like giving an argument to practice. Before I just pressed ls and press enter. And what that would do was just give me a list of things inside of the folder I'm currently in. All right. If I want to list the stuff that is inside of a different folder, I say list, list, and then the folder I want to list stuff from. So I list practice. And now it's listing stuff from practice. And as you can see, the model.uxf file has been moved to the practice folder. That's nice. Let's say I want to do something else. I want to, I want to rename something. I want to rename my practice folder to something else. Okay, I want to rename it to practice one. Okay, I use the move command still. And you might be wondering why. Why is there no uh, rename instead? Uh, the reason is because of how Unix stores files in a system. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, in the next video. That's a little complicated. That kind of deserves its own video. Um, but for now, just take my word for it. Move does move the file and it also uh, renames the file or the folder. So I want to rename practice to uh, practice one. That's what I said, practice one. Enter. Well, the terminal didn't say anything, so there must be no error. And let me ls now. Look at that. Practice has now been changed to practice one. That's nice. What if I want to do something more interesting? Let's say I want to copy. Yeah, let's say I want to copy files. All right. I want to copy. Let's, let's just go to practice one. Okay. LS again. Let's say I want to copy model.uxf uh, from practice to Batcave. Okay. So copy to a folder back. So the command for that is CP. It stands for copy. Okay, copy, and then I type in the file that I want to copy. And now I type in the folder I want to copy it to. Remember, when we wanted to go back, we typed in cd dot dot, and I said dot dot represents the parent folder. Okay, parent folder of practice one is Batcave. So instead of typing in the entire path for Batcave, you just type in dot dot slash. That means the folder that I want to go to, I want to save it to Batcave model.uxf and then I press enter. All right. Again, the terminal didn't say anything, so there must be no error. ls dot dot. I'm going to print the stuff that is inside of the parent folder of practice one. Parent folder of practice one is Batcave. Print stuff inside of Batcave. Enter. model.uxf is here. See? We copied the folder. I mean, we copied the file. Um, well, I guess one more thing that you should learn how to do is removing files. The removing files is fairly straightforward. Uh, you remove files using the rm command or the remove command. Um, I want to remove the model.uxf file inside of practice one. I'm in practice one right now. So I type in rm model.uxf, press enter. Didn't say anything. Well, let me just double check anyways. LS and the model.ux stuff is gone. Uh, one more thing that you want to note, though, is that when you remove things using the terminal, there's it doesn't go to the trash can, okay? It's gone forever. Uh, inside of the finder, if you delete things, it goes to the trash. Uh, model.ux stuff didn't go to the trash. It's just gone. Yeah, there's no way you could recover it anymore, so... Yeah, just keep that in mind when you're deleting things using the terminal. Right? Let's learn how to make new folders. That'd be that'd be very useful. You do you do that by typing in mkdir. That stands for make directory. Make directory space and then type in the name of the directory. So I'm gonna call it new. Uh, yeah, new. All right, ls again shows new right here. Data structures and the new. Um, ls-l to show you that it's actually a directory, okay? Directory right here. 
And then obviously we can do everything with it. We can go CD uh, new. And now we're inside of new. Let's go back to practice. Say I want to delete new. You would think it's just RM and then typing in new, right? But that doesn't work. RM is a directory. Uh, the terminal doesn't let you delete directories like normally, so to speak, okay? Uh, you have to delete them using this command. You have to add a special flag to RM. Uh, remember, we added this flag dash L to LS. It's kind of like that. You just type in RM dash R and then new. R stands for recursive. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it right now. Um, and that's gone. No worries. LS. Let me show you this thing called man. Okay, this is the manual page. And let's say I want to go LS. And this is the manual page for list. And you could use the arrow keys to go up and down and read the manual page for LS. And it will give you all the parameters for it. Nobody remembers all of them. That'd be crazy, actually. Look at that. That's, that's basically the entire alphabet. Dude, that's crazy. So this is the manual page. Uh, if you're stuck and if you don't remember what the parameter or what the argument that you want to use this, but you know it exists, you should come to the man page and then you could just look for it and then find a proper explanation, okay? So nobody remembers any of this stuff. Like nobody's crazy enough to actually try to memorize it. So, so anyways, if you want to quit the man page, escape doesn't work. Um, so you press Q and it quits it. So yeah, that's about it, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Next video will be out soon. And in that, we're going to be talking about how files are stored inside of Unix or Unix operating systems, so Linux and Mac. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about these uh, thing after the D uh, in ls-l, the permissions of a file and how to change them and what exactly are they? What is What exactly is all the other information that you see inside of ls-l? and a bunch of other stuff. So it's going to be pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I guess I'll talk to you in the next one. See ya.